Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Please be seated. Welcome to the first China Focus panel discussion here at B Global. My name is Dion, CEO of China Insights Consultancy and also an advisor for Trevor Luca. I will be your moderator today. First, let me thank James and B Global for inviting, for having us here today. And um, I want to apologize to the audience because Mr. Huang De, the top executive from Bank of China Korea, cannot be here today due to an urgent meeting in Beijing. So first, let me start by introducing my panel members. First, it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Shao Shunchang, president of the Beijing Intellectual Property Operation Management Company, which is the pioneer in IP service and commercialization business in China. Mr. Shao is also a director at Zhongguan Sun Development Group, which was established to serve and develop high-tech companies in China. Mr. Shao, let's go. Um, next, I want to introduce Professor Hu Yanping, the founder of Data Center of China Internet, DCCI, a leading internet monitoring and data platform in China. It is our pleasure to have Professor Hu joining us today. And he has also recently agreed to join Triple Lucas Advisory Board. Again, welcome. <laughs> Lastly, I want to introduce Lily. She's the president and creator of Triple Luca, the only China focused inc incubator in the Korean startup community. The agenda for today is actually very simple. We're here to help the Korean startup community to understand more about China, gain more insights and knowledge of the China marketplace. So I want to start a discussion by offering our audience some insights uh, into the China startup community. And since Zhongguan Sun is known as China's Silicon Valley and currently hosts close to 13,000 startups, I want to ask Mr. Shao to please give our audience a description of Zhongguan Sun and how Korean entrepreneurs can potentially, can potentially work with Zhongguan Sun in China. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, well, I Beijing the Zhongguan Sun Kuan Sun. Okay. 它已经有二十多年的历史 So Zhongguan Chun started in 1983 as a street of four computer, um, computer electronics. Uh, until now, Zhongguan Chun is the host for many startups in China. 那么中关村到底有多大呢? 中关村的面积一共是488平方公里。它涉及到北京的十六个行政的区划都有它的园区。On the slides, you can see that's, the, that's how big Zhongguan Sun is, 488 square kilometers. 那么在中关村科技园区内呢, as you can see on the screen, there are many impressive statistics on Zhongguan Sun. There are about 15,000 15, yeah. startups uh, in the Chinese Silicon Valley, Zhongguan Sun. Number of the with more than 190 employees. 190 
。那么整个中关村的高科技产业呢，大概电子信息啊。这个从事电子信息的企业呢，占到了百分之五十六，有八千多家企业是从事电子信息的。As you can see, there are more more than eight thousand companies in the IT sector, accounting for fifty seven percent of the total businesses in Zhongguancun. 那么从产值来说呢，中关村的整个电子信息的产业占到整个中关村科技园区收入的百分之三十六以上。And IT accounts for around 36 percent of the total revenue in Zhongguancun. 那么中关村呢？现在呢，一共有两百四十家上市公司。那么其中有一百家是在境外，在美国呀，啊，在欧洲，在日本一些城国家上市。There are a total of 200, 240 listed companies based in Zhongguancun. A hundred of which are listed overseas. 那么中关村科技园区呢？这几年呢，非常重视企业的创新活动。那么现在的中关村企业拥有的专利的数量有十二万件，但其中呢，发明专利啊有七万件。As you can see uh, from this chart, um, there, there, there are close to seventy thousand uh, patent. Um, Approvals out of Zhongguancun right now. 那么这张图的是显示二零一三年啊，整个中关村企业专利的申请数和他获得的专利权的数量啊。下一张 ，next next。Yep。啊，那么整个中关村呢，它的技术转移呢，呃，有很大一部分是流向了国外啊，是向国外进行转移的啊，大概占到这个三分之一左右。There's quite a bit of uh, uh, intellectual property outbound flow from Zhongguancun, accounting for almost half. Uh, next one. So this is the situation of Zhongguancun. In Zhongguancun, there are many universities and universities. There are also state universities. In this area, our innovative companies are usually in the first universities. 那么现在整个在孚的企业，每年在孚的企业大概超过三千家。呃、uh, ，every year there are around three thousand uh startup companies in Zhongguancun. Uh, Zhongguancun focuses on incubating uh startups, and as you can see, there are some statistics on on the on the PowerPoint. 那么中关村科技园区呢，也是一个开放的园区。那么到现在呢，一共在。一万五千家企业当中，有百分之十是外外资呃外国企业在中关村注册的。那么其中韩国在中关村的企业有五十四家。中关村 is a very open community. Uh, foreign registered companies account for almost eleven percent of the total number of companies, and there are fifty-four Korean companies in Zhongguancun right now. 下一张。中关村发展集团呢，是围绕中关村科技园区建设，呃的一个国有的企业，它的注册资本金是一百七十二亿人民币。The registered capital for Zhongguancun is about one hundred seventy billion RMB. 那么中关中关村发展集团呢，它主要有三项业务。第一项是围绕中关村的高科技产业进行投资啊，进行资本上的支持。第二项是围绕着园区的建设、基础设施建设、开发啊，进行这个园区的建设。第三部分，它是搭建中关村整个的科技金融体系。There are three main businesses of Zhongguancun. The first one will be direct investment. Second one will be uh finance, and the third one will be real estate development. 那么，中关村发展集团成立有五年，这五年呢，我们一共通过代持政府的资金、公司自己的自有资金以及通过管理的基金，我们一共投资了三百六十个项目，投资的总额七十一亿人民币，大概是十二亿美金。中关村 has made investments amount to one point two billion U.S. dollars into.、Uh, 三百六十家企业。Uh, into 360 different companies. 
那么现在中关村发展集团呢，目前管有管理有八个这个八个科技园区，那么一共这个我们管理的物业达到一百八十万平方米，八个专业科技园区，像软件园、生命园这样的。There are eight uh, special um, uh, technology parks. 下一页 ，next， 嗯，那么我们现在中关村一支呃，以管理有四十七支这种基金啊，人民币的基金，大概管理的总额大概达到四百四百亿人民币左右吧，啊，通过这些钱啊，我们支持我们的园区的企业。There are currently 47 uh, investment companies based in Zhongguancun, and their total AUM is around 42 billion RMB. Next. 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 Zhongguancun is also in China, and in other cities, there are more than 50 cities that are doing this kind of business with the community. Zhongguancun also has presence in more than 50 other countries and cities. 那么中关村呢，也在积极的开展国际合作。目前，我们在美国、在加拿大、在芬兰啊、在以色列，我们都有我们的机构。中关村 has projects、uh, all around the world in Israel, in Canada, in in America, and they're very active in cooperating with foreign companies. 啊，我们也希望有机会也能跟跟我们韩国的。这种呃科技园区或者我们的这个科技界进行合作，谢谢。And、Mr. Shaw is looking looking forward to working with Korean startups and Korean companies in the near future. Thank you. Okay, so thank you,、uh, Mr. Shaw, for your valuable insights.、Um, next up is Lily. Lily, I understand healthcare. Education and environmental sectors are some of the、uh, focus areas for Tribal Luca, correct? And、uh, since you're here,、uh, could you explain to us why did you choose these three sectors for Tribal Luca? Well, first of all, thank you, Mr. Xiao, for flying all over from Beijing to support Tribal Luca and our dear friend James Chan, Be Global. And thank you, Dion, for、uh, the lovely contents by far. Well, first of all, Tri Beluga Tri for all of you guys here. That means three. It is the only platform that is, has been curling in the world connects Korea, Silicon Valley, and China. And we also have three sectors under our umbrella: Tri Beluga Incubator, Tri Beluga Marketing, and Tri Beluga Business. So that is our Tri ecosystem. And last but not least, we. We're the only technology company that focuses on he, H E E, health, education, and environment. So for those three sectors, I personally, with the support of my team, we believe no matter what century you're from, from, and what nationality you are, these three sectors. Have been the three sectors been pushing the human civilization forward. So we believe we want to help the world, and by starting from Korea. Speaking of health sector, it is China's third largest sector globally, and it has been growing, still growing, double digit in the past years. For China, it is aimed. To, for Chinese government, it is aimed to increase the private hospital beds from 9% to 20% by the end of this year. And speaking of education, education sector has been working with many other technology sectors, such as big data, business intelligence,、uh, gaming, uh, gamification, like you learn through games. And many others, even like the new tools, like the 3D printers, and that's education.
for 2014, China invested over 1 billion RMB over e-education sector. And last but not least, environment. I'm not sure if you guys know, in the past three years, the most rapid growing sector under environment in China is actually air purifier. For air purifier, under the Chinese statistic prediction, it is still going to grow by 39% annually in the next five years with steady growth. So with all those impressive numbers, guys, China is your next target. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing with us, with us Lily. Um, next up, I want to invite Ms. Professor Hu to talk about Internet of Things, or commonly known as IoT. Without a question, IoT allows companies to generate more revenue, lower cost, and improve efficiency. It also allows company to be creative and disruptive. Even air, <clears throat> air purifiers, air conditioners, ovens, and fund, are finding ways to be innovative again with the help from IoT. So, Professor Hu, could you comment <coughs> on the IoT space in China and abroad to our audience? And since Tribal Luca focuses on HEE, could you also comment on these three sectors specifically? Thank you. Now, yeah. IoT in China has two forces that are driving it. One is 如火如荼的创业和创新的热潮，一个是技术产业，尤其是Internet，从信息互联网到智能互联网的发展，呃，是它的第二个驱动力。There are two main drivers for IoT in China. One would be Internet. The other one. Uh, one would be Internet. The other one is the wave of innovation. The second one would be technology itself. Um, from internet to uh, information, uh, to smarter information technology. 是,那中国过去一年时间就有一千多万家新创立的企业. Uh, there are more than uh, 10 million new startups in, com uh, in China last year alone. 投资在中国的增长，在过去的一年里，在不同的领域，尤其是在互联网、医疗、健康、啊、IoT、啊、教育、环保等等，投资在这些领域的增幅年增长幅度是在百分之四十以上。Investments in various sectors in China has increased by around forty percent over the past year. 呃仅仅在过去一年里面,在天使龙以后,主要是在A龙, B龙, C龙的医疗健康领域内的投资项目,公开的项目就有103起,投资金额是在14亿美金以上。Within education, uh, within education alone, healthcare alone, uh, there are around 1.4 billion dollars invested in the last year alone. 而IoT领域的发展,从速度, 到范围来讲,要远远比这个增长比率还要高。And the investment in IoT is much faster than the number that I just mentioned. 对,中国几乎所有最主要的互联网公司,百度、阿里、腾讯、三六零、乐视、小米等等,都无一例外,都推出了自己的面向IoT的各种各样的智能产品。All of the most well-known IT companies in China are actively participating in this space. The BATs, the 360s, and also the more conventional um, players. Traditional companies like Huawei, um, uh, sorry, Hire, Huawei, Lenovo are focusing more uh, on IoT because 
this will give them an opportunity to uh, improve their more traditional home appliances products. 那么在这个领域更突出的一个特点是什么呢？是中小企业在智能设备、泛智能设备、IoT这个领域内，呃，正在有更大的作为。This allows smaller enterprises to really actively participate and make a difference within this IoT space. 对，在过去一年里，呃，包括我本人在内，身边的朋朋友，我们看到大量从硅谷。包括从以色列，然后相关的技术产品进到中国市场的这样的一些案例，成功的进到中国市场的案例。Over the years, I've seen many people who came back from from Israel, from Silicon Valley, to really have a very successful product in China. 对，那么我们有一个啊，对这个现象的一个提法和概括，就是比如说美国技术、中国制造、全球市场。one of the trends that we noticed is American technology produced in China and market globally. 对, 包括中国的百度, 腾讯, 360等等这些公司, 过去一年里在以色列的投资项目, 呃, 在早期的, 早期的这样像Startup的一些投资项目, 是我个人知道的在30多个以上, 对。uh, the BATs has invested in more than 30 projects in, in Israel alone, and that's just the ones that he knows of. 那么这个就给我们带来一个新的思考, 移动互联网也好, 智能互联网也好, 它是一个全球化的市场, 全球化的协作, 是一个新的分工协作体系, 中国不再只是中国, 美国不再只是美国, 韩国不再只是韩国, Mobile internet has bring everyone closer, China products are not just in China, Korean products no longer just in Korea. The market is becoming more global every day. 那么在IT和Internet过去的20年里面,我们看到三星在中国的成功。Over the last 20 years, we have witnessed the success that Samsung has enjoyed in China. 对,我们看到韩国的游戏在中国市场巨大的成功。And we have seen video games from Korea becoming very, very successful in China as well. 对，包括我们看到了Cocktalk和中国的腾讯之间成功的一个合作的模式。Even the cooperation between Qualcomm and WeChat in China. 那么我们认为下一浪在中韩之间，尤其在移动互联网、在智能互联网、在医疗健康、环保、教育、啊，数字内容这些产业领域内，未来尤其在中小开发者、中小创业者、中小企业这个层面。未来将会有大量的合作，这样的一个合作，用我个人的一句话讲，就是啊，韩国的技术、中国的市场，加上全球的市场。And his his view is that Korea technology, um, China market and even global market in the future is the way to go. 是，所以啊，我们隐隐约约看到了一个新的未来，这个新的未来就是。中国和韩国的开发者、创业者、移动互联网的从业者，包括从事智能设备等等，未来这这在这些新的领域，呃，将会有大量的、更多的合作、团队的合作、资本的互相的介入和投资，包括企业之间知识产权的啊这样的一些
Thank you. Thank you, Professor Hu, for sharing with us. Um, lastly, since we're running out of time, I just want to ask our audience to offer their advice uh, to, uh, to our entrepreneurs sitting here today. What, are sort of the, uh, what is the one single most important success factor for companies in China? Uh, Lily, do you want to start? I think everybody here, no matter you're from uh, the world or Korea or China, I think we all understand there's a term called guan xi. Guan xi. What is guan xi, Hu Lao Shi? I think guan xi is, at least for our investors, is that we have to have a trained connection with the trained In his view, guan xi is having the right channel, uh, have, knowing how to get things done. 谁能够让中国的业者和韩国的业者之间有关系? Uh, who can create that relationship, the bridge between Korean and Chinese entrepreneurs and companies? Shao, Shao Mr. Shao, what's your view of guanxi? I think it's confidence. I think we've built this Shaw believes that Guanxi is about trust, having that trust through B Global, through Tribe Beluga, just building that trust is important to form that long term relationship. I personally think Guanxi is a logical, rational, but also emotional management of networks and friendship. And under that surface, you gotta have the mutual goal towards something. And for here, no matter it's Tri Beluga, no matter it's Zhong Guanchun, who has been investing $45 billion into startups in the year of 2014 only, or no matter is Professor Hu, the most respected scholar from China, I think we are all having guanxi together. <laughs> Thank you, Dion. Thank you, Lily. Um, so I want to offer uh, a quote from Bill Gates from the recent Boao Forum conference just two months ago. This is what he said. The idea that the status quo isn't where you want to be in terms of breakthroughs in some areas, it's more likely to come out of China than almost any other place because of this bias towards doing big projects." End quote. Um, I think, Lily, do you want to sort of help the audience understand this quote? This quote will be the end conversation of our lovely panel today. Thank you all for being here to support our Tribe Beluga panel. China isn't one market. China has many, many markets. China isn't one culture. China has many cultures with 56 ethnic groups and not only Mandarin language. China has one government, but also many, many subsidiary governments. And China, the longest human civilization in this world, is sitting there waiting for you guys to rock it. Are you ready, Korea? Thank you, Silicon Valley, for all the guidance. Thank you, China, for the opportunity. And thank you, Korea, for believing us. Thank you. Come to meet up.